Yo, how's it going? Lad here. We just got another Tavern Talk today for September 18th. There's a lot of exciting news happening this Wednesday, so let's get straight to it. The Glassum Cup is now over, if you're watching this video, but we have gotten to tier 3 on each of these missions, so shout out to everyone, and I hope you participated. Next, we have the long-awaited collaboration with Triangle Strategy. This Wednesday, you can get your hands on Sir Noah, Frederica, and Roland. Let's start with Sir Noah. He's gonna be the free unit of the three. In the JP side, he was widely to be known as the best unit of the three. But that might not be the case anymore, as both Frederica and Rola have received pretty good buffs. If you played this game from the release, you'll have to raise him from 3 stars to 5 stars. Kind of like Elvis from Bravely Default. But it's gonna be much easier getting him to 5 stars, as you'll be collecting his materials from the Convictions game board. This is similar to a fortune board, but I'll get more on that later in the video. Back to Sarah Noah. He has an ability that lets him cast his other battle skills twice, so kind of similar to Berserk mode from A2. He also has a ranged firestone that's an AoE fire elemental attack that inflicts combust for 2 turns, although this ability can only be used 3 times each battle. Finally, his support skill, or his passive, allows him to follow up with another attack after using his normal attack. He definitely is a good warrior, and he's free, so that makes him great. Next, we have Frederica. She has been buffed. Her passive skill, Magic Ablaze, raises elemental damage for 15% for the front row, and 15% elemental attack by 15% when a combusted enemy is present. Previous passive was simply just a self 20% elemental attack up when a combusted enemy is present. So that's a huge change. As you know, we like AoE buffs. Next, her Blazing Chain has been buffed in the amount of times and combust by 1. This is an elemental fire damage to a single target and reduces 2 shields. Again, it used to be 1, regardless of weak spot, and it also inflicts combust for 3 turns. Again, it used to be 2. So pretty much the developers slapped a single target double wide burst onto Frederica. That's pretty cool, considering that she's a scholar. Next, her Bloody Eruption. It was buffed from her potency of 230 to 260 as shown here, and from a 20% more point to a 50% more point if enemy is combusted. She's definitely going to be hitting close to damage cap, and she surely will be the strongest fire scholar to date. Next, her ultimate technique. This has been buffed from a potency of 600 to 800, and from a 20% to more potency to a 50% more potency if enemy is combusted. So this is definitely hitting the damage cap for our doubt. That's the highest potency ability we have currently in the game if you disregard Elfin's last stand. After using her ultimate, she is prevented from gaining BP for 2 turns. On the JP side, this used to be 3 turns, so pretty good buffs. Finally, her A4 accessory has also been buffed. Before, she gave a front row 10% elemental attack up if a combusted enemy is present, and then she was also given an extended status ailment for additional turn. For global buffs, she now, at the start of battle, she inflicts a 3 turn AoE combustion at the start of battle. The front row gets a 15% elemental attack up if a combusted enemy is present. Then let's move to the last traveler, Roland. He is a strong merchant capable of dealing polearm resistance down. His opportune attack is his passive, where after he moves to the front row, he gets a damage up of 15%, a physical attack 15%, and he can raise the attack count of some skills by 1. And compared to the JP side, he was given the physical attack up for 15% for the global buff. Rush is one of his attacking abilities. It's an AoE polearm attack that inflicts 10% physical defense down and 10% polearm resist down. It also switches him to a back row. The added 10% defense down and polearm resist down was the global buff. Lance Earl is his nuke attack. With his passive opportune, he can cast this ability again. Before on the JP side, it was just a potency of 260 with a 1.2 times modifier if you went before the enemy. Then his next ability, Flash of Steel, is an AoE 4 hit polearm that can hit 5 times if opportune is active. Before buffs, it was only a 3 hit AoE attack and then 4 if opportune was active. For his ultimate, previously, he dealt a single target 2 turns 15% polearm resist down with a 4 hit pull armor attack with a potency 115 each. With the global buff, it's now a 2 turn 20% pull armor resist down with a 4 hit pull armor attack with a potency of 125. And a pretty good buff, his speed has been increased from 350 to 400. Speed is definitely one of the most important stats in the game, and now easily, he's the fastest merchant to date. Now let's talk about the banners. You can obtain Sir Noah from the Conviction Board and his mats to give him to 5 stars. Both Frederica and Roland are in their own set of banners that uses paid rubies. That's pretty amazing. The amount of high highs from 9S still scars me to this day. And then on step 5, you're guaranteed either Roland or Frederica, depending on what banner you chose. That's pretty good. And then on the free ruby banner, they'll both be in the banner with the same rate up. Now each of these paid banners will give you 120 conviction fragments, which make it a step 5. 10 on step 1, 20 on step 2, 30 on step 3, and 60 on step 4. Conviction fragments are the pity fragments for either Roland or Frederica, and you'll need exactly 200 of them for the pity. Moving along, the conviction game board. This is similar to the fortune game board. We're going to be receiving 4 permanent game boards. You can receive items and you can freely go anywhere you want on the board as our dice permits. You're going to receive metal convictions to upgrade Sir Noah along with other items that are up for grabs. 
You're gonna want to grab these items as well too. The Vanguard Scarf, which increases their speed by 30% for the first 3 turns. The Jet Black Inklet, which prevents BB recovery at the start of battle for 3 turns. This might sound bad now, but I'm sure there'll be a use for it sometime in the future. And then the Critical Necklace, which is a crit damage up of 15%. That's pretty good. Nextly, starting from September 18th to October 3rd, make sure you log in every day for a grand total of 666 rubies, 20 traveler seals, and a Serenoa seal. There's gonna be a photo spot, and these usually give you rubies, so don't miss out on that. And then we're gonna be getting special tasks from September 20th to October 11th. These will grant you more rubies and freebies. So pretty much, get up to date in story, and do your dailies. And for those who spend a bit in the game, the discounted ruby packs are back along with the awakening packs. The awakening packs are definitely worth it, it should be $49.99 USD each. I wouldn't focus too much on getting the booster packs, as they usually aren't worth it. Next, we have a generous pay to win feature, a new encounter. You can get any of the 8 OG casts from COTC for only $7.99 USD. Only once though, so if you're missing that Lynette Awakening Stone for Ultimate Level 10, for $8, you'll be able to have it. And then we have another Traveler, joining the crew, Rome. He's a 5 star Fire Cleric that can only be obtained through the new encounters. He is another somewhat generous new encounter that you'll have to purchase to receive. He'll cost $2.99 or $3, and you can buy his stones 6 times for a total of $18, which allows you to get his A4 accessory and his ultimate. With the Wednesday update, all the 4 star Travelers can be awakened to 4 stars now or you can obtain all their accessories now, and some of them are pretty good to have. This game has also gotten up to 3 million downloads, so amazing job. And to those who are starting out new, this is a great game to pick up. Moving forward, there's the official fan art contest. This starts from September 25th to October 9th. Anything related to Octopath is welcomed, whether it's Octopath 1 or 2 or COTC. So definitely show off your drawing skills. My drawing skills are equivalent to a third graders, so I'll be setting this one out. Lastly, on October 4th, the Merchant and Cleric Training Tower will be available, so that means ultimates added to Largo and Yanlong. Also on that date, Master Training X 4s 4 and 5 will be available, so get your 4 and 3 stars ready for that. Alright, well that wraps up everything that's happening this Wednesday. Are you planning to pull for the Triangle Strategy characters? I probably will. I enjoyed the game when it came out. Anyways, look out for the overviews, they'll be dropping out soon. I'll see you on Wednesday, take care of yourself, and let out.